Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to our webinar about importing uh, into Inflow. Uh, my name is Kevin Hogan, and uh, I'm joined today by the wonderful Kiri and the excellent star. How's everyone? Hello, everyone. Um, today, for, for this webinar, it's going to be a, a little bit on the, the beginner side of things. We're not going to get too deep into uh, some of the workflows in, in in importing and some of the uh, more specific or niche uh, needs that you can do or meet with importing. Instead, we're gonna focus largely on how to get your data into inflow and sort of some, some things that we see frequently that trip up our customers and how you can avoid that. Um, otherwise, uh, the important thing to note about inflow is you can import all kinds of information into inflow through Excel CSV files. Um, Excel CSV files are just a format that Excel is able to uh, make some, you know, make, uh, you know, save files in. And I actually forgot, we're going to start today with a fun fact. Um, today is actually Steve Carell's birthday. I know he's out there watching at home, but uh, I'm going to ask my uh, co-presenters here to uh, tell us what their favorite Steve Carell movie is. Uh, personally for me, I really liked him in Foxcatcher. He played a, a really dramatic role that we don't normally see from him, and I thought it was a, a really great performance on his part. Kiri, what about you? So mine's a little sentimental. I think the most watched is 40-Year-Old Virgin, but the most sentimental is Crazy Stupid Love, because that was my wife's and I's uh, first date. We went and saw that, so that one holds a special place to me. Mine is uh, not as sentimental as Kiri's, but it's almost along the same topic. Date Night. I love that movie with him and Tina Fey. I can watch that over and over again. Another great one. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think that, there's a bad Steve Carell movie, so it's hard all to answers find. are correct. Yeah. Not that I've seen anyways. Um, <laughs> yeah, normally we start with some sort of fact just to, to get us all to know you better, but there wasn't a great fact out there that um, I could find, so I decided to go with that. And yeah, we're going to continue on with the webinar. I'm going to start sharing my screen. Star's going to be answering any questions you have in chat. And Kiri's going to be backing me up, helping provide you guys with um, some links to relevant information. And I'm just going to let you all know we have a great knowledge base. We have a lot of YouTube videos about using Inflow or previous webinars. So feel free to check that out if you ever run into troubles. But uh, we're going to dive in. So um, right now, I'm going to start with Inflow in the web. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Inflow can be accessed from the web in, on either Windows or Mac. Inflow can also be accessed through the Windows desktop app, which you can download uh, down here. And I'll show you how importing works in that today. And in case you don't know, we also have a mobile app and a smart scanner, which you can use with Inflow. But today's focus is on um, importing and creating products. So um, just to show you that I'm starting with a fresh database and I'm not trying to uh, pull any fast ones here, you can see I have no purchase orders. Um, I have no products in the system. And I also have no customers or, or sales orders in the system either. And we're gonna import all of that in. So if you have it in the Excel CSV file, you don't have to manually type all of this information in, or you can configure your file so that it matches what Inflow is looking for. If I come up over here into the top left corner and uh, down here to the import, this is where we're going to start doing our, our imports into the system. Uh, one thing I'm going to do is take you through what some of the files look like that I have as well. Um, so I have a bunch of import lists that I've prepared. We're going to start with our customer list. And thank you for linking that, Kiri. Uh, that is a great resource for finding all of our templates. And sometimes what I'll recommend to customers I work with is to actually uh, create um, create a, a product, create a customer, create a vendor, the way that you want it to look in the system, and then you can export it from Inflow um, so you have the headers exactly where you want them to be. Um, this is just some random information that's in a file. And uh, this is my customer list. One thing I, I want to point out is in Inflow, uh, we only have one field for the actual name of the person at the company. We don't have a first and last name field. So what we typically do is we do a uh, concatenate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a new uh, list. I'm going to make this contact name as my header. 
and we're going to go equal sign, concatenate, and we're going to cover first name, comma, uh, and then in order to have a space, we're going to set that up, and then we're going to grab the last name, and we're going to put that there. Oh. And, sorry, it's this way. There we go. And you can see that this is now joined uh, the names together. And just some small Excel formatting can really help you guys out in terms of getting your information uh, to be in inflow the way that you want. Sometimes what I do too when I'm importing and there's multiple files so I don't mistake it, if I do make a change, I'll put a little X here in the, in the column header just to know that this is not a field I'm looking to import. Um, and you can see here we have the name, which is the name of the company. Uh, it's important to note as well you can import pricing schemes if you have them set up for your customers already. If not, that's something you can update and do later. We have the ability to import your payment terms, your taxing schemes, and then remarks. And then these are all custom fields that I've created here that you can uh, modify or import on your own. And under is active, by default, we're going to import all your, when you do an import, everything is going to be active. Uh, which means it's available to you. If you want to have a, an inactive product or a product that doesn't show up, you can just set this to false. Um, most of the time with Inflow, we have uh, true or false um, rather than other programs which will have um, one or zero or a specific word or, or letter to correspond to something in that column. So it's just important to note that um, that's one difference that does get some people caught up with Inflow. So just keep an eye for that. Uh, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this file. Uh, yep, we're going to keep that formatting. And for anyone who doesn't know how to save an Excel file as a CSV file, or if you're just not sure, uh, come down to File, go Save As, um, you know, select your folder where you're keeping all of this, and just make sure down here that your save type is CSV file, uh, comma delimited, and hit Save. And now you're going to have a CSV file, and you can take that from you know, your XLS or whatever other file format that you have. Um, so now that I have my file all set up, I'm going to go to my imports down here, and I'm going to select which file I want to import first. I'm going to start with my customer list, and I'll go look for my file, or I can drag and drop it here. We're going to put that in, and I'm going to hit next. And the nice thing is, is if I have all my headers of the column uh, matching what Inflow is looking for, it's automatically going to fit and put that information in for me. However, I didn't have my billing address properly named, but that's okay. I just come into here and I'm going to select address and I am also going to put in other information if I want. And then for shipping address, we're just going to make it the same as the other one because uh, most of my customers, at least in this case, are only uh, shipping and receiving inventory to a single location in the system. Um, otherwise, you can put in all your other information here about your customers. And what we do is we're going to hit next and we are going to import that into the system. Now, one important thing or one question I get asked a lot is how long is this going to take? And uh, in a lot of cases, it really depends on how much data you're trying to import at once. Uh, typically what we recommend if you have larger files is to chunk or, or break down that file into smaller files. Um, and there's two good reasons for that. One, it's more efficient, so things get uploaded faster, uh, the files tend to get hung up less. But the other thing is, uh, imagine you set up a file and you go to upload it and you've got you know thousands and thousands of lines and you find out that the entire file was uh, not formatted correctly or some of your, your columns didn't match and all of a sudden you waited however many hours uh, for it to import only to come in the next day and find out that you know only two line items got imported. So we always recommend where possible to try and break that down. Um, so let me check out the customer list here. And that's still going to be formatting. Um, and I'll just wait for the email in the back end. And what we'll do is, uh, while we wait for that to happen, so I can you know, show you that, in fact, uh, the customer list did get imported, I'm going to work on the uh, product details. Well, you have that we moment. Sorry, yep. to I mean, I'll just answer John's quick question, because he was just asking the reason why I'm putting a false flag instead of uh, deleting the line when it's imported. Mm -hmm. um, and really, that's just there, because Inflow doesn't actually delete anything. You 
pretty much set things to active or deactive. So you use that true or false to simply specify if it's active or not. Mm -hmm. Just to answer that if anyone else was wondering too. And, and um, yeah, it's also going to, um, you know, anything that's deactive is not going to actively show up. You have to configure that filter to have it show up in any search that you do. Um, so it's in, but it's there for historical and, and data integrity in case you have to go back and look up that information. Uh, it's always there. Um, but you can see here that it's imported all of my customer information, how I have it set up, you know, the contact name, the email, the website, uh, the pricing scheme, their taxing scheme that I have set up, and all their other information. Now, this is a, a custom field that I've set up. And what I recommend is uh, if you haven't created a, a sample customer and added those custom fields in, uh, you can always come down to your options and go to your uh, inventory, sorry, uh, your, oops, sorry, that's under global. Uh, and you can go to custom fields and you can add whichever custom field you want into the system. So if this is on a sales order, maybe I want you know shipping number here as a custom field. And so when we go to import sales orders, it will show up on the, the screen as well. Um, and then what will happen, and just to show you again that I don't have any too much set up, is uh, I only have one location in the system. And when I do stock level imports, uh, you'll see that I'll be able to create other locations and sub locations as well. But for now, I just have this one. And before I dive into importing products, uh, one thing I do want to talk to you about is categories. Typically, I recommend getting your categories set up in Inflow first. Uh, so I can come into here and under this uh, large one, I can go add a subcategory and I could call this something like air freshener or whatever is going to work for you. And this way, what happens when you import it, your products are going to match to those subcategories rather than being all in a main category. You can always rearrange them later. That's not a problem. Um, but personally, I like to get that set up first. But I'll show you what it looks like and the difference between having a category and subcategory as well when we look at the actual product import. Um, so what I'm going to do again is, uh, and actually I'm going to do this in the desktop version of the software because there's a really great feature there that I like for importing your product details that's not quite available on web yet. So for anyone that doesn't know, this is what our desktop looks like. It's available on Windows desktop only, so my apologies to Mac users. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to import. And I'm going to select product details and I'm going to find my file. And in this case, we're going to go with product details. Now, before I import that, we're going to have a look at what that looks like as well. Uh, just so you guys can see, um, just so you can see what that file looks like. And uh, yeah, so today we're not necessarily going to go too in depth into what um, the unit of measure feature looks like but Kiri maybe if you don't mind sharing um, uh, the link to the knowledge base article um, but essentially what it is is imagine if you uh, bought a six pack of pop and you resold them as individual cans that's essentially what uh, unit of measure is so I'm going to open up my product details uh, file in here and take you through some of the things that are uh, common in inflow um, so by default, every product has to have a product name, and that product name does have to be a unique field. Um, one great way to check for that is to come here, go conditional formatting, and um, you know go to uh, highlight, and then duplicate values, and you can go through and see if anything's duplicated uh, within there. None of this is duplicated because I've tested this. Um, we also have the ability to import SKU and barcode. You can import it if your products have it. Um, if they don't and you're looking to inflow for barcoding and you want inflow to generate barcodes numbers for you, leave that blank for now and I'll show you how to have inflow automatically generate that for you. Um, so right now these are blank for me, both uh, SKU over here and barcode over here. You can see here with category, I have all of these categories, but for the ones we talked about in janitorial, like chemicals, I'm just listing the subcategory here. And that's because Inflow is automatically going to know that, okay, if this is a, a chemical category, this is going to link into that janitorial. And I can go through and set up different types of uh, item types. In Inflow, by default, your product's going to be a stock product. That's everything that we sell. We also have uh, service items, which is anything that's non-tangible, as well as non-stocked and uh, serialized products. 
And if your product is serialized, uh, you can see down here, like I have this heart rate monitor, it's a stock product, but track serial is set to true. And I have a serial prefix, um, a middle part that's gonna increment by one, and then a serial suffix. Uh, if you don't track it or you get your serial numbers from your vendor, just leave that as blank. But if you're manufacturing it or you're assigning a serial number yourself, you can always have Inflow generate those for you automatically. Um, you know, I have all the other stuff here, like description, uh, default. This is default uh, unit price. I have markup. If you have fixed markup turned on, you can turn that on here and get it set up. And if you are in a country or you sell a product that's tax inclusive, you are going to want to make sure that this column is tax inclusive is set to true. Um, and then uh, there, we also have a great knowledge base article about how to set up tax inclusive pricing and inflow. If not, you can set up each of your pricing schemes in here. So for me, and in this demo, I have a couple different pricing schemes. I have clearance price, I have cost price, I have euro price, MSRP, tier one, tier two, tier three, and US dollar. Now, um, it would take a lot for me to keep doing imports to do all of that, but in desktop, I can import all of these pricing tiers at once. Um, I also have the ability to set up uh, cost here as well. Now this cost is my cost of the product. If I'm using weighted average, it will import as that. Um, but that's different than my vendor price, which is over here. And that could be because this might be moving average and I have some data in there, or there's a little bit extra cost that I have to factor in. Um, and then sort of with unit of measure, you can see here that uh, we have different uh, unit of measure. So we have a sales unit of measure. In this case, I sell this by the pair but I purchase it by the box. And essentially what happens is uh, my sales UOM ratio is one to one, but my purchasing uh, UOM and my purchasing ratio is uh, one box equals 10 individual units. I also have uh, different custom fields here that I've set up. And because I've already set them up in Inflow, it's gonna tell me to map there as well. Um, now, one important thing to note about the um, Product details import is, is active, is set to true by default. If you do have a product that's seasonally you don't, or you don't sell anymore, you would just set this to false. If you don't want to import them, you can always delete them and remove them. You just don't have them in the system uh, at start. And if you have different vendors for the same product, we'll do an update to see what that looks like. But for now, um, I just have each vendor that supplies me with whichever products I have in the system and then their unique vendor code. So what I'm gonna do is uh, close out of this, and I'm going to get to the exciting part where we actually uh, import, this, uh, import this product details. So again, we go to import, we go find our file, and we're gonna go with product details. Our delimiter is comma, and we wanna make sure that our header columns are in the first row. I hit next, and now I'm gonna go through and map everything here. And you can see, that uh, it didn't map serial next number, but again, I just find that in the system. But now it's telling me to map all of my different pricing schemes in the system here, as well as my cost. So, and you can call your pricing schemes, whatever you want. If you wanted to call one of these, uh, you know, super special, you could do that. So what I'm gonna do is just find the one in here that uh, represents each of these listed. And this way, rather than Rather than going through and doing import after import to set up multiple pricing schemes in Windows Desktop, you can come through and just do that uh, automatically in here and import them all at the same time. Um, otherwise, once you're happy with all of your mapping, um, that's great. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit import and all of that product is going to come into Inflow. So we're gonna give it a minute to import because we do have to take some time to do that. Um, and yeah, now, uh, right now, if I look at my current stock, we might see that some products have started to import, not quite yet, uh, but we will be able to see that when all of the files get imported as well. And again, it just takes a little bit of time because we're putting information into the system and uh, it's gonna come in and update uh, some information there. 
just so you know as well, you'll likely get a email notification too when it's completed, which is, I think, also helpful. Sometimes you could just, you know, grab a coffee sometimes if it is a large import. And then you'll get that email to your phone or to your computer when it's all done. Makes it super easy so you don't always have to kind of watch the kettle boil. All right. So uh, one thing that does happen, if you do have errors in your, um, in your import, uh, as I just did, you will get kind of an alert uh, from Inflow kind of letting you know where those, uh, where those errors are. And um, while that's loading up, I'm just going to look quickly at my file here. And check that out. So we're just gonna, but I think what's happening here is it's giving me an error because that was in a uh, separate form. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna format cells and we're gonna format that as text. And we're gonna file save that. And we're gonna do that import again, yep. And so you can see here that it's told me that these are where the imports are and this text specifically needs to be uh, a number on those lines. So let's try that import again. And that's the good thing with smaller files is you get that feedback right away rather than having to wait for it to, to come in later on. Oh, we're going to do that in the desktop. So we're going to come through and we're going to remap everything here. And this is just a quick recap, but that's all you have to do for mapping is just look it up in the system and it will come up and everything will get mapped okay. Oh, and one thing I wanna talk about when importing product details is if you're on an entrepreneur plan or you're looking at that where you're only gonna have one location and you don't have sub locations, you can import default location quantity here and it'll just say in your warehouse you have 100 units. But if you wanna get into having like shelves or bins or, or boxes or other locations, I would leave this blank and import that on a stock level import. So let's hit that import there. Okay. And uh, yeah. So what we're gonna do, because I uh, we have to import that one more time just because I didn't have spe a special tax rate there, is we're gonna take that out because I didn't set up a special tax rate and that column was blank. So when I was looking for it, it couldn't find one because I did not set that up in the system. And we're gonna do that in again. Special tax rate, and we're just gonna leave that as blank. And we're gonna hit import. And now our data will, should uh, import properly and correctly into the system. So just give us one second while that does that. That should just pop up, but um, yeah, even Mason was talking about how he did 17 imports when he transferred over from um, his old accounting software to Inflow and it just made everything so much easier. And you're right, Mason, like this is something that I think a lot of people will do at the beginning of their Inflow journey is if you are using a software from before, this is a great way to get everything up and running to get your products all in there, getting stock levels in there. And if you had previous purchase orders and sales orders, you know, great way to get all the, that documentation in here. And, you know, it's something you can kind of ongoingly do as well, right? Um, you know, inflow, it's all on a cloud, which is amazing. If something happens to your computer, it's all safe. But if you ever want to make records for yourself and keep some of these details just in a CSV form, if you ever need to do updates, you can always do that too, right? Um, they're great for templates. If you are ha also having to bring details from another software over, um, you know, use that export feature. It can give you the template of how 
info wants you to lay things out, you know, and just also makes it a lot easier to get your information in there. Okay, so let's change that file because that file is giving me some errors. And good thing I have a, a backup file here that we can use. Oops, there we go. Okay, here we go. So we're going to go that one, and we're going to go here. And we don't have a special tax rate, and we can import that as well. Okay. There we go. So while we're waiting for that, or while I redo that import, just because I have to update this really quickly. There we go. We're going to import that into the system. And then uh, while we wait uh, for that to import, Okay, let me try importing that in here. And while you do that as well, Kevin, I'll just quickly answer. Bobby, um, there are a lot of reports that you can run to find out some of those details. I'm going to link you to an article that will break some of those down for you. You can search things through categories, specific items. You could search them. So many different things, so many different reports that you can run, actually. So if I go and I look at my, um, if I import it, you can now see that we have uh, all of this equipment created in the system. Um, and we can have all of that information here as well. Now, when we're importing, we also can import separately pictures for our products. And that file is going to look a little bit different here. So I'm going to open up the product images import. And you can see here that we have a product name, and then we have an image URL where we want to reach it. So you're going to have to have your uh, images in some sort of uh, folder online that you can map to and is open. But now what happens when I go to uh, import that? Uh, we are going to, you'll see that it has the product name. You can also map SKU if you have it, and we're going to hit next. And now we're going to import that, that as well. Now, if you notice our products, I didn't import the SKU or barcode here. However, that being said, if I want Inflow to automatically generate those for me, or maybe I imported some, but some of my product doesn't have it, uh, what I can do is I can come down to, or I come down to options, and I go to my inventory, and I go SKU or description. And I have make sure that displays product name and SKU. And then I can go generate under barcodes and hit that so that inflow is going to generate it automatically. I can choose a prefix that's static. I can choose it to start at any number that I want. Maybe I want to start at here. And I can hit generate barcodes and SKU. And the nice thing about that is when I do come back to my product list, uh, you'll see that inflow is automatically generated in SKU in a barcode. And that's just what it looks like. So I think that's a really useful tool, uh, especially because a lot of people I talk to uh, don't have that set up in the system already, or they want to know how to get easily started with barcodes. Um, but you can see here I have that information in about this uh, product. Uh, the other options that we have for importing as well, and this is one I want to talk about, is stock levels. Um, and this is what uh, a typical stock level import is going to look like. So we have the product name. 
we have the location. You can also have SKU here so that it matches. But more importantly, uh, we have the sublocation, we have the quantity, and then we have a serial number here. Um, so just a normal serial, if you do have serialized products, they do have to be imported uh, line by line uh, individually, so one by one. And that's because we want to make sure that we're associating a, a serial number to a single uh, product in the system rather than multiple ones. And in this case, you know, I have, you know, three or four locations in here and I have a million different sub locations where I'm storing this. And this would take a lot of work to structure and get set up. But with an import, uh, we're not going to save that. And, but with an import, I can go to stock levels. I can hit next. And I can see here, I can set the inventory levels to what's being import, imported, or I can add it to existing inventory levels, or I can subtract it if I'm doing a, a larger adjustment. And the mapping's pretty straightforward here. I have everything in that column. Uh, I have it all set up. So you can kind of get this preview in the web of how that's going to look. Um, now, uh, before I do that uh, and get this imported as is, um, that's if you're coming to us and you're not and you're starting fresh with no other information in the system, you're going to import your stock levels. But if you're importing a sales order into the system, that's going to look a little different. Uh, because anytime you import sales orders or you import uh, purchase orders, those actively affect the inventory you have in the system, especially if they're, you're importing historical ones. Uh, I often also get asked, you know, how far back should I go with my data? Tech, what I like to recommend is, um, you know, if you can start fresh, great, start fresh in inflow. If you do have to import historical data, you know, think about what information is going to be relevant to you. You know, if you've been around for seven years, are those files or information you have from five, six, or four years ago going to be relevant to where your business is now? Um, is it something that you're going to need to retrieve? Or is it something that you can keep inside of your, um, that you can keep inside of your system uh, or keep in an Excel file in case you have to uh, reference that later? Um, and usually if the answer is you have to save it to reference it later, uh, then you shouldn't import it into Inflow. And that just means you're starting fresh, your database is going to have the best performance possible. Um, one thing to note too is uh, this sales order has four line items on it. And for each of those line items, I need to have a line. A lot of the line will have the same information like payment status, customer, contact name. But we, when we get across and we get down to uh, the product name and product description, as well as the quantities, those are different for each of these line items on this order. I know in some uh, softwares, they import them differently. They have like a header or a break in the, in the Excel CSV file, and that just doesn't work for us. Um, the other thing too is this column is taxable. So if you do have a special tax rate set up, uh, you can put that in here for that specific product when you're doing the import. And again, you know, true and false statements, if it's a quote, if it's canceled, um, all that is false. And if we do have a blank uh, series here, Inflow is going to create a new sales order number for that and lump it all together with these existing sales orders. Um, so there's nothing too much in here. I just have basic information you would see on a sales order. And just to illustrate how um, that we do affect uh, the inventory when you import it, uh, I guess I should add a file to that. And stock levels is not the file I was looking for. If I hit next, what we're going to do is it'll pull in this information. And I have two options. I can import the orders as open, which means I still have to process them later. And that might be something you do if you have orders that are open for existing customers already that you're waiting to fulfill. Otherwise, if they're historical, import them as complete. And now what happens is uh, I'm going to map all of these fields again to make sure that it uh, works and that everything matches what I'm looking for. I don't. I didn't have SKU set up at the time. I didn't have sublocation set up at the time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit uh, next, and I'm going to import this file. And what will happen when we do that import? Um, what will happen, we because I do have to do that import one more time. Oh, no, it imported all of these. So if I now look at my product list, 
uh, you'll see that I have negative inventory here for what has been imported and sold. And obviously negative in inventory is not something we want to be in. Um, so once you import uh, your sales orders, you can also import your purchase orders. Uh, that file largely looks the same. And one thing I should mention is that for our statuses, um, they're the same for uh, sales orders as purchase orders. But we have fulfilled, which means we received everything in, we have started, and we have unfulfilled for payments. We have partial, unpaid, paid. And some, some, uh, some systems will call it invoiced, uninvoiced. Uh, other ones will have separate files for each status. Um, some will call it partial. So you just have to update that verbiage to be what Inflow is looking for. Although for inventory status, your only options are importing them as open or fulfilled. So now if we import this purchase order, uh, this is going to adjust that inventory a little bit as well. So we'll go here. Everything's mapped nicely because I have the headers matching. And we're going to wait for that to be. And that should be a fairly quick import. So you can see here, it's created all my purchase orders. Oh, I imported those all as uh, unfulfilled. But if I wanted to import them as fulfilled or I want to bulk uh, fulfill those, um, you can always update them later as well. So I'll import that purchase order, hit next. And this time I'm gonna hit completed. And so when I do do that import, great, that's going to import. And now uh, I'll go back to sales orders. I'll go to my purchase order list. Um, once that's imported, you should see that that is all uh, fulfilled as well. So we'll just give that a minute to import. Let me try that one more time. And if it, uh, yeah, oops. So in that case, it looks like uh, I have a bit of an error on the update, but that's okay, because what I can do is I will go to uh, purchase orders, and just for the sake of this demo, I am going to import this as uh, complete, but I'm gonna leave order number uh, blank, and Inflow will create one automatically for me. So when I do that, and I come in, and I start to look at my product list, as that uh, imports, these will update and even out to reflect that information. So some of these stock levels have changed, but if these are all historical information and maybe I uh, made a stock adjustment and took some stuff out of inventory, uh, what we can do is we can now import our stock levels to what they actually are. Um, so we're going to go back and we're going to do that stock level import. I'm going to come here and we're going to import stock levels. We have all of our information and I'm going to set the inventory level to what's being imported. I'm not going to add it to existing and I'm not going to subtract it because we're going to start with what theoretically should be an actual count here. So I'm going to hit next. And we're going to wait for that file to import as well. So we're just waiting for that file to import. And, and like I said, that was a little bit of uh, a larger file. So I think when I tested it, it took uh, a couple minutes to come in. But yeah, it looks like, uh, Kiri, you've been doing a great job linking in all of that information. And there's been some great questions in chats. Definitely. Everyone is asking some really great questions. Is, is there any in particular that you wanted to highlight while we wait for that uh, import to complete? 
Yeah, I mean, Desiree was asking about, so if you had to do something like importing batch uh, barcodes, and you certainly can do it, and this would probably be the best way, is that, you know, once you have your, your barcodes in there, if you needed to make a change to a few set that, you know, ha that are in a specific category that you'd like to have, you know, somewhat of a similar kind of barcode layout, um, you can update that through something like a product details CSV. Um, you know, you could just change the barcode of those set ones and just do an import of those items. Uh, and that would be a quick way of being able to just do a quick batch change if you needed to. Great. So I, I just got word that our import uh, happened and updated. So now you can see all of my in inventory is theoretically correct. And if I come into this product, you can see here that I have the sublocation set up where I have that inventory as well. So it's created those sublocations for me in the system and it's made those adjustments as well. Um, yeah. And let's see here. Um, one thing you can do to set the stock levels correctly is you could also zero them out. So if we wanted to import stock levels and zero our inventory out, we could do that as well. Um, so uh, we can just come into here and where we didn't have sublocation before, um, we want to remove that. So what I'll do is I'll just take, uh, I'll just set this as blank and then I'll update all of the, uh, all of the ones here. And that way, when we import it, do that, and we'll set this to zero for everything. And that should zero out any of the negative inventory that we still have in the system. And this is also how you zero it out if you have to make any changes uh, at a fundamental or higher level as well. There we go. Now I'll set that to zero. So I'll file and I'll save this as a CSV file for webinar imports, stock levels, and we'll go uh, stock level zero. Oops, it would help if I could type today. And I can save. Yeah. And so what I'll do is I'll close that out and I will go to import. And I'll go stock levels. And we'll just import that up so that we can. Um, adjust our inventory uh, in those blank sub-locations as well. And we'll do that while we wait. And I think that covers off, uh, oh, the only other import we had to do was our vendor list. Um, and that looks very similar to what we have in the system as well. So you can see here that I have a contact name. Again, I made this from the first and last name that was provided here. Uh, these are all my vendors. Uh, we have discounts, we have payment terms, your taxing schemes, which you can create an inflow ahead of time, how they pay. But more importantly, this is an interesting column as well. We have lead time as a column. So if you know that on average, it takes your vendor to supply you with new product in 10 days from the point of order or five days or 15 or six months, whatever your lead time may be, uh, you can use lead time in some of the reports to help you uh, understand where your reorder points need to be, understand uh, forecasting. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to my import field and not save that. And I'll go import. And we're going to go to vendor. I'll pull that information in here. And again, it's got all of my information here for this customer. And uh, yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'll go next. And we're going to import that as well. And you can see here, it's uh, created my vendors for me with all of their information. And if you do import uh, who your vendor is that supplies it to you uh, on the product details, you'll see that vendor's products that they supply you with, your SKU number, as well as their product code and their price. Um, this is what that looks like in our web. 
but in desktop, you can also see some other information that's really cool with that import. And yeah, and that's sort of all the different files that you can import and, uh, you know, not to uh, dive into anything else, but you can also export a lot of information into Excel CSV files in case you want to manipulate the data further than reports allow. Um, so any of the items here can be exported into an Excel CSV file. And if I want to say export my product details, I can go export. This is going to export that information. And now I have a file that I can use to manipulate further, import, or if my old file didn't have a SKU or my old file didn't have a barcode, I now have that same file with that information in here. Um, and this is probably a good, uh, a good point to turn it over to see if Kiri, you have any more comments or there's any questions you want to highlight, or if anyone uh, waiting at home has questions that uh, they want us to answer or ask. Yeah, I was just quickly answering uh, Senya. Uh, essentially just explaining that the stock levels import is mainly just for increasing your stock levels, not for adding new products. Um, you'd want to use the product details import for that first and then use the stock levels to set, you know, the quantity um, or lower quantity uh, with that one. Just so you're aware. Yeah. And uh, just to show you what I was talking about with um, categories early on, uh, you can see here, uh, when I imported the original product details file, um, all of these are just high level categories, but anything I have that is a uh, chemical now falls under that properly. Um, and we can see that this uh, product has pictures as well. Uh, I didn't have pictures in that file for all of the products, um, but there is a pretty good representation there. I can always clear that out and look at all of the products that I have in the system. Um, yeah, so uh, Mahesh, um, basically looking up brand, in my case, I created these as custom fields down here. You can call these whatever you wanted. Um, and so basically, when you set up Inflow, uh, you're going to go to the custom fields. And what, what's that, what that's going to allow you to do is, um, that's under global is you can come in here and set them to be whatever you want, wherever you want them to show up. So if this is on a sales order, maybe I want to uh, put down picked up by um, on some of them, especially sales orders and purchase orders, you can have it print on the documents if it's filled out. But what those custom fields allow you to do is if I go to my product list, I can now go to filters, I can add brand, and I can look up any product that has a specific brand, just like I think you're asking. And now you know that everything in this search, or if I want to come down here and look up, let's say, a bell, any search here will apply to anything that has, um, you know, bell in it and is this brand. Yeah. Uh, so once you, once you do add those filters in, um, you just have to enable them the first time. And then once they're enabled, you're able to move around. And I believe they still show up there as well. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, Tim, uh, that's a great question. If you have access to desktop, uh, you can use desktop. Uh, personally, I like the visualization that um, importing gives you on uh, in the web. So if I go to my product details, I can come here and I can look at that product and I can see that I have uh, this information here. So it kind of already gives me all of that information and I can view. If you don't really care about the view or uh, you don't necessarily need that, uh, then yeah, you can absolutely do it in desktop. But personally, I, I like to see this view. It kind of gives me a, a little bit of a uh, preview of what I'm actually importing and it helps out. Um, but otherwise, you can do it in both, you can do it in one, or you can do it in the other. Um, and one, one thing we can also do is, uh, again, we can import through, um, do imports to update specific information in the system. Um, if I want to browse and I want to do some 
import details, and I have different vendor pricing, I can do that here uh, and set up the vendor pricing within that file specifically for this customer or for this vendor. Uh, I'm just going to take SKU and barcode out of it because those are actually in this file going to be different because that's uh, my base file uh, import. But we're just really interested in uh, importing here our cost. And uh, in desktop, that's why this is kind of a really good way to um, import that information uh, for product details, uh, just because in desktop, it gives you that functionality and flexibility to import those pricing schemes as well. And I think Rachel, just to answer your question about if you have inflow to auto generate your barcode numbers, is there a way to print multiple barcodes at a time um, or would they need to be separately? And just so I'm clarifying, is it just like you're trying to print a bunch of barcodes from different products all at once? I, uh, yeah, I'm curious. If you don't mind, I'll take this one because I think yeah. we have. So we're working on uh, some improvements to printing and barcoding. That's very exciting. That's going to be coming out later this year. Um, but in the meantime, generally what happens is if you go to a product record, you can only print one barcode at a time. Um, you also have the ability to go to your um, look at your inventory, look at barcodes. And you can do print barcodes, and you can go through. And this sort of allows you to print uh, them like this if you want. But what I typically recommend if someone wants is starting out and they want to print a, a bunch of barcodes is to use a purchase order. Now, you can make this purchase order to someone that's a, a bit of a dummy account. They don't have to be real people or in the system for real. Um, but what happens is, is if we have this information here, uh, what I can now do is I can go print and I can print barcodes for every product I have on this list, or in this case, it might is by the box. So now all I have to do is just hit print once and it's gonna print me all of these barcodes out that I can then use, pull off, label and, and stick to each box. Um, now, what I would do as well to make sure that I don't affect my inventory because we have different, um, we have different information here as well. Uh, in terms of products on hand, what's available, what's on order. Uh, in this case, I would either leave it as a quote. Um, I would leave it as a, or I'd set it to be a quote, so that way it doesn't actually affect my inventory. Or if I don't want it to show up to a specific vendor, I would just create a vendor that is, uh, you know, the generic vendor or start vendor, and uh, do a PO import to that vendor import all of my products uh, in the quantities that I want, maybe from my uh, stock list, and uh, print out the barcodes like that. Now, if you do have a lot of products, you might have to change the role a few times, but unfortunately, uh, that's just not something we can do for you. And just to add on, like if, if this is something that you might need to do every month or so, like Kevin said, leaving it as a quote, maybe just renaming it as your barcode template printer. Um, and you can keep going back to that same one over and over again and then just, you know, take out the products that you are uh, needing to print that time around. Uh, and or, you can always kind of use it as your little uh, template. Yeah, and you can also change the quantity as well, too. So maybe this time I'm getting uh, 20 boxes of this and I'm only getting one of those. And now if I save and I print this, uh, per or I, oops, I have to convert this to an order uh, briefly to print the barcodes. Um, and then when I do, it's updated that information in here. And I can even choose not to print that as well. Um, the other thing too is uh, when you print serialized barcodes, uh, if you have received it and there is a serial number on it, uh, it will print those uh, barcodes out. Um, and what I'll do is I'll just generate those serial numbers here. I'll hit save. And now when I print the barcodes, uh, you can see that this is available to print. 
And by default, our, our, uh, our serial number barcodes look a little bit different, and I'll show you what those look like uh, really quickly, uh, just so you get a sense as well. So they have the barcode for the product, and then they have the barcode for the serial number there. Um, so uh, Michelle, um, so you can only print all barcodes. Uh, yeah, if you go through that screen, that's the only way you, you know, that one right now currently only allows you to print all barcodes. But if you do it through a purchase order, um, whether it's through an import or otherwise, it will allow you to print the barcodes that you want. Um, and, and that's typically how I recommend it if you're printing a, a bunch. Or your other option is you can print it by product at the time, have a label party, label everything, and, and do that. Um, Mason, uh, in terms of building reports, um, it, it's kind of up to you and what your personal preference is. The one thing I will add um, about reports and inflow is that uh, in the web, uh, when you look at them or save them as a PDF, some of them do have pictures of what the product looks like. Some people don't like that. Other people love it. Um, if you're using desktop, it doesn't have uh, the pictures of the product. But um, the other great feature in desktop is that you can actually save reports that you've configured. So if you're running reports frequently or you're doing heavy reporting, then typically I recommend doing that part in desktop. But the great part about being in, in, in Inflow Cloud, and I'm sure Akiri will tell you, um, is you can use whatever works for you where you are. Um, and that's exactly that's, it. I think whatever you think works best. You know, I mean, if you're on a Mac, you're probably stuck having to use the the web version, um, unfortunately, unless you are savvy with using um, some ways around that. But um, again, like Kevin said. Personal preference, whatever you think works best, they are pretty much exact. Yeah, and and some of it is also uh, related to, you know, if it's a one-time thing, maybe uh, you borrow someone's computer and log into your Inflow Cloud, or uh, if it's something where you're running into it continually, you know, you could always uh, invest in a Windows computer or a Microsoft Surface computer and uh, use that to uh, use those functions. Uh, in terms of, of barcode font and style, um, most of our scanners support a, a wide variety. Right now, we don't have the ability to print QR codes. Um, this is, I think, code 39, the barcode that we use. Um, but generally, Inflow will accept most barcodes. Uh, the only time we kind of run into issues with them being accepted or not is um, if you use more intelligent barcodes where you have dashes or separators in them uh, that uh, denote other personal information or other, sorry, other specific information about the product, we sort of just read it as one text field. So uh, sort of keep it simple. And thank you all again so much for coming out. It's, uh, yeah, and actually coming up in September, I think it's on September 16th or in around there, uh, our next one is going to be about our e-commerce integration with Cart Rover and how Cart Rover can help you integrate Inflow to uh, a whole bunch, I think over 40 different uh, just e-commerce solutions uh, where you can take orders and have those automatically pop into Inflow. Um, as always, if you have any questions, reach out to us, uh, reach out to our support team, sign up for a free trial. It's the lowest commitment possible. Uh, no credit card, no commitment. Uh, you get to see all of this in real action and test your stuff. Uh, yeah, Luca, we will be posting this after we process it and edit it a little bit for um, clarity and continuity. This will be posted again. Um, but we do have the knowledge base articles uh, if you do have any questions about importing, and it will walk you through that as well. And I'm just linking the, our support page in the chat. Uh, if you do need to reach out to support, all the various ways that you can do it um, are listed on that page. I think this okay. has been the best webinar of the year. I think so, too. Yeah. And it's not because we were in it. I, nope. I just think so. Yep. Well, we'll leave it to the uh, People's Choice Awards at the end of the year. 
There we uh, go. Yeah, choose best webinar uh, from the flowies. Android management software. Yeah, the flowies. <laughs> all right. We'll see you at the next one. Yeah. See have you all day, and uh, have a great day.